Welcome to another episode episode of Badass Banking. I'm wearing my orange just for this meeting. It's because that's the color of the EXL logo. It's also the color of the Badass Banking backdrop. And today I've got uh, Anna Rick. Anna, how do you pronounce properly your first and last name? I go by Anurag Mukherjee. Anurag Mukherjee. Does that sound good enough? Yes. I need yes, to perfect. I need to practice my my Indian. So he's with uh, EXL. Anurag, tell us tell us a little about your background and what brought you to EXL. Sure, well, that's a pleasure. Uh, firstly, Brian, thanks a lot for inviting me to the show. Appreciate that. Exciting times ahead. Uh, Introduction about me. I go by the name Anurag. Uh, so five years in close to five plus years. Uh, did analytics plus management consulting. Moved on to Excel two and a half years back. Exciting stint at Excel. Started at Excel again, doing analytics consulting for Fortune 100 uh, banks, mainly North American banks. Uh, since the last close to one year, I lead the growth for our products slash fintech business. Uh, focus towards community FIs. So that's pretty much about me. Yeah. So, so what were you doing at Accenture prior to coming from uh, coming to EXL? Oh, that's an interesting story, right? Uh, so, while at Accenture, I worked with twenty-five plus Fortune one hundred clients, Fortune five hundred clients. So, I started, you know, with uh, oil and gas, Telco worked with a bunch of retailers and finally found my piece uh, working with a bunch of financial institutions. I worked across uh, three countries, six cities, typical consulting stint, uh, worked with a bunch of Jesuits over there, mainly helped uh, analytics slash AI transformation, helped in developing AI roadmap, implementing uh, analytics slash data science solutions out there at Accenture uh, for these firms. Gotcha. That's uh, that's pretty exciting. Was uh, was it a big change going from working with retail to working with banks? Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, uh, the, the way of working is absolutely different from a FI to a from to a retail, but the ethos remains same. Is prob is being obsessed towards problem, you know, uh, solving problems for customers, right? So that hasn't changed. So if that's, that remains the core, I don't think any of the industries make any difference per se. Gotcha. Okay. I'm hoping on the screen right now, you see the slide that you gave me that says, let's drive your business forward. Is that the right slide that's showing? Yep. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Slide two I, is I, about us. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought it'd be a good time for you just to, this is a great slide because it talks about the various industries or vertical focuses EXL has. If you could just, just walk us through this slide. Sure, maybe let's do a quick round of introduction about EXL. Uh, yep. Yes, we are a pretty interesting firm, right? We are uh, close to 24 years old, not very old, not very new, but yeah, exciting bunch of people working out there. Uh, based out of New York, uh, downtown, we are listed firm, firstly, listed in NASDAQ, uh, revenue of close to one and a half billion, market cap around six billion, right? So. A few days back, we released our quarterly results where we went ahead and increased our guidance from previous revenue projections to uh, the current revenue projections. And that actually was on the north side, which means that we are doing good as compared to the market. Uh, apart from revenues, uh, we have around uh, 40,000 plus employees working with us worldwide, 50, across 50 plus offices, right? Essentially, I mean, it's, it's a joke for all of us to talk about when we just converse that we've got offices across all con continents apart from Antarctica, right? So that's what uh, our presence has been. Uh, essentially, uh, out of this 40,000 employees, uh, if I wrap it up, wrap these 40,000 employees into two buckets, there would be two broad buckets, right? If you look at the pyramid on the right-hand side, uh, one half is analytics, the second half is digital led operations right so i'm a part of the analytics vertical we have around 7000 plus data science consultants working out of you know 20 plus offices across the world 
so that's that's analytics business. The rest is digital and operations. Again, a good chunk of the operations business sits out of India and Philippines, obviously serving clients worldwide. Right, so that that's pretty much uh, very quickly what Excel is. We're talking about uh, what do we do as a firm? What are our industry focus? As you can see on the screen, Brian, broadly, you know, there are five, I would say, or six industries which we cater to for now. Firstly, banking. Banking is where I sit in. Uh, I work with Vikas Sharma. Vikas leads the uh, head of, I mean, Vikas is the head of banking uh, analytics. He's based out of New York. So he leads the banking analytics practice for us. Uh, so in terms of banking, essentially, we work with almost uh, all the Wall Street banks, given our, you know, I would say, locational proximity to Wall Street. We work out, we work with eight out of 10 US banks, around four out of top six UK banks, uh, all top four networks in US, a bunch of very interesting fintechs and alternate providers. So I think it's a good combination, good mix of traditional banks, fintechs coming in, new banks. So yes, it's, it's an interesting journey that uh, EXL as a firm is working across in banking, right? So that's banking. Apart from banking, you've got a good business across insurance, healthcare, retail, retail and media. Another noteworthy, which is not there in the slide, is sports analytics. So we are one of the de facto leaders of sports analytics of North America. Uh, that's a very interesting practice which we have incubated, and we expect that this will grow many fold, uh, you know, in, in the coming years. Yeah, so, so I think that's that's pretty much about EXA. Let me take a pause and uh, wait for your reaction. Yeah, I mean, my first reaction, and you and I have talked about in the past, is number one, you guys are huge and remarkably diversified, yet no one I know and none of the people you and I have been speaking with have ever heard of you. But when they they see what you're doing and they hear of who you're working with, um, they're always blown away. They're always very impressed. And, and I think one of the things that really impresses them, aside from the fact that you're diversified, um, which I think is very important because you get different views yes. and opinions and, and competencies coming from the very verticals you focus on, which I think is part of the challenge of the banking industry, right? The banking industry needs to think beyond just being a bank or being a credit union. They need to think with more purpose and intent about the experiences they're trying to buy, uh, build. But this slide here, um, your accelerators that you guys have built for community FIs, could you talk for a minute about the strategy behind building the accelerators? And then Mary, maybe briefly just go through each of those. Sure, absolutely. I think this is a very relevant question out there, Brian. I mean, why accelerators for community FIs and why not uh, the full suite of consulting engagement that we do? So traditionally, we work with all the top FIs, including banks, uh, fintech lenders. One thing we should notice is that there's an inherent difference between working with a maybe a 100 billion bank with a regional bank or with a community bank. And what is the basic difference, right? Firstly, uh, one scale, right? I mean, the scale is absolutely very different, one. Second, uh, maturity, maturity in terms of data, in terms of technology, very different. Third, I would say broadly, you know, talent, right? So do you have the right sort of talent in a community FI to go ahead and uh, pull a, or help EXL with an engagement of maybe, you know, uh, six weeks or, or maybe, you know, six months, six weeks to six months? to go and do a due diligence and understand what your current situation is and Excel goes and and, and does a crawl walk, uh, you know, run journey with them. So that is not, you know, certain, right? Because uh, it, it's a time-taking process and that's not feasible. So what, we've, so what we've come up across is, you know, I would say condensing all our knowledge, what we've gathered, working with the best-in-class banks, at one place and developing accelerators. Now, what do I mean by accelerators? The accelerators are not, are eighty five percent finished products. Now, what do I mean by that? Like, for example, payment or right. So it's a high tech, high touch approach of doing collections digital. However, it's 
eighty to eighty five percent completed. Why? Because we believe the last fifteen percent, the last mile, has to be walked along with the FI itself to go ahead and tweak it, customize it, and implement it for the FI. So that's the reason I would say that's those are accelerators and not uh, products, right? Because products are very different mindset. Accelerators are something which can be uh, tweaked and customized. So let me just let me just uh, step back for there for a second and and ask a question. So it sounds to me like the accelerators are, and I love the term last mile of delivery because that's a term we use at Move-in with with kind of how we work within a banking as a service uh, space with both banks and fintechs. We we create that experience level at the end. Um, but it sounds like you know you you pre baked a number of these solutions based upon what you've learned dealing with some of the biggest banks around the globe. But now you're pushing out into the community banking space where you recognize the banks have, and credit unions have remarkable challenges. And their their, uh, needs are very divided right now. I mean, they've got remarkable challenges due to socioeconomic pressure, fallout from SVB, in First Republic, and you know, the list goes on and on. And then there's the economy as a whole, and don't even get me started on the interest rate environment and, and the impact that that is having. Right now, there's a you know there's been a fairly remarkable outflow deposits among you know among especially regional banks, a little less so yeah. I believe in the community FI space. But these are things that people need to be thinking about right now. You know, risk is, I mean, it's top of mind from a regulatory perspective as well as from you know, a portfolio perspective for, for a banker uh, of just about any size. Proper pricing you know, is another example there uh, that we see there. Um, you and I have spoken at length about pay mentor and you know how I feel about pay mentor. I think it's fantastic. Um, that digital journey is, is much less um, imposing than the traditional phone call that says, hey, Brian, you're late with your payment becomes a yep. you know, bad things happen to good people, especially when it comes to un- uncertain economic uh, situations. And so it again, it's leveraging what's happening in mobile and digital in order to to make the collection process contextual and relevant from an experience point of view, as well as you know creating the, uh, a leveraging an engagement strategy that just makes common sense. Um, you know, pricing strategies are critically important right now. I, my experience has been in a down economy, a lot of financial institutions pull back on marketing. So your marketing as a service uh, example is a great one. What you're doing with the telco, I think is great. And then these consistent themes, which I think are remarkably important, which all turn into disruption, which is, you know, yeah. how do I leverage data? How do I govern data? How do I platform data? And what is the information or the uses from data that I can that I can fully leverage in the marketplace today, and that's the the transaction insight. So I I view you guys just based upon what I I've heard from you, what I've read about you, and in speaking to some of the product management, you guys are um, disruption enablers in essence. You're you're enabling financial institutions, large and small, to quickly through your accelerators, put into place programs that drive efficiency and revenue, as well as helping them mitigate risk in a very logical way. And because they're, again, you're offering that lace, that last mile, you said you had 85% kind of baked in, you're giving them the ability to customize it 15%, which drives the level of collaboration between a big company like EXL and, you know, what conceivably could be a you know, middle-sized bank of two or three billion dollars in assets. So, Definitely. I, I spoke a little about payment or talk about the risk decision as a service. I, I just think that one is very applicable today to today's market. Yeah, definitely. I mean, looking at the way how things are turning up after you know, rates rates shooting up, the cost of funds increasing, the havoc across the entire canvas, right? Definitely risk is top of the town, right? I mean, definitely there are a bunch of things which keeps a CRO or a VP risk, SVP risk awake for night, right? Uh, I think risk decisioning as a service is a, is a very well-timed offering, right? 
So you've developed this offering uh, in conjunction with Olio Women and Coiro platforms. Uh, Olio Women, we've all heard about a big niche management consulting firm. Coiro platforms is again a very niche, I would say, product firm uh, incubated by uh, X. Amex leadership, right? So essentially, it's like combining best of all three worlds, right? All your women bringing in their compliance experience, pure play consulting from the from the lens. EXL bringing in consulting plus analytics, as well as Corridor bringing its huge amount of experience and risk with people like an Ash Gupta or a Manish Gupta coming in on board and uh, promoting this product and blessing the product with their knowledge and wisdom, right? So essentially, risk decisioning as a service, I would say, let's look at, into, look at it into two broader perspectives, right? One is typically underwriting, that's a growth story. Second is managing your portfolio better, right? So what do I mean by that? Let's start with underwriting first, right? I know this, the current situation, you know, uh, people are a bit jittery about the growth story, but it's still important. At the end of the day, you've got to lend, right? Unless you lend, your bank doesn't really function. Well. So risk decisioning as a service ensures that you underwrite the right set of customers, right? Do not underwrite negative selects. Now, what do I mean by that? You don't underwrite folks who actually, you know, take out a loan from you and are not able to pay back, right? As simple as that. So you cherry pick the customers who can go ahead and repay your loan. Right? That's one part. Of it. Second, also identifying very various pockets of customers, maybe a thin file, maybe you know different segment of customers who are, uh, I would say, credit deprived for now. Right? So this uh, offering ensures that there is no discrimination across any such criteria across the board, right? So it ensures fair lending. It ensures identifying the right set of customers who might be be, you know, deprived of credit and uh, extend credit to those personas. That's about the growth story. The second part or second leg of it is, is managing your portfolio better. Right? How do you go ahead and manage your portfolio better? That's a billion dollar question everyone is talking about. How do you go ahead and proactively identify trends, patterns, early warning triggers? How do I understand, right? I mean, I mean, I'm, what is going south? What is going north? As simple as that. So I think it's 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 a combination of the both and uh, best of both the worlds growth plus managing your portfolio in a in a well or better fashion and bringing out experience of all three to go and manage your portfolio better. Another one that I feel is very um, pertinent today's market because it's a continuing theme. Frankly, it's been a theme since I got into banking back in the 1980s. And yes, I'm that old. Um, talk a little about what EXL is doing from a data perspective and it's data interesting, service. I mean, interesting, right? I mean, we call ourselves as a data-driven organization, right? That's what we do. That's a bread and butter. Now that starts from maturity to, you know, walking the talk as simple as that, uh, doing analytics, uh, which means extracting insights, helping customers or clients take well-informed decisions using the data, right? That, that, that's the entire uh, journey. So I think the bedrock is data management, right? We need to get your data managed as simple as that. Now, what do I mean by that? Starting with maybe, you know, data governance or uh, data maturity roadmap, right? Or I mean, typical bunch of data, what kind of data? But I don't know what to do with the data, right? Or even, you know, there are 15 different systems that do not talk to each other. There are data which are there across 15 different systems. How do I go and, you know, bring all of them together? How do I leverage all data that I have today, right? So we've got a dedicated offering, a bunch of really smart people whom I personally like, right? Uh, they comprise the, the, the offering called data management as a service. Uh, they help FIs, uh, you know, take well-informed decisions from data, starting with managing their infrastructure well, creating a roadmap across governance, across your maturity, 
basically sorting out the entire inf uh, i would say infra quality of data to ensure that you can actually do analytics on top of that to get insights out of it and take well informed decisions right so it sounds like you know you're able to sit down with a client and help them choreograph a a plan and ultimately a solution on how to address the challenge of data which is how do i take Definitely. data how do I take data and put it to use? How do I govern that data? How do I get all the sources of data that I have out there today, whether it's from my core, whether it's from maybe a FinTech partnership or a separate division of sub or subsidiary, if you're a more complex F FI, uh, and then you know make sense of it. And, and, and again, the governance challenge is there, how I ha handle it from a platform perspective, my accessibility challenges are there. Um, so it, it sounds like that last mile that you referenced in, in the previous discussion uh, really fits in, especially on the data side, because the FI challenges with data are, are vast. Everyone out there understands the need to use and leverage data. The, the, the biggest challenge, and they know they have the data, the biggest challenge is really making sense of it making it logical so that I can use it from a business intelligent perspective and then leverage it so I as an FI can be much more relevant to the customers I'm engaging. So without a data platform that's logical and well um, choreographed, you really cannot differentiate your experience you know, comprehensively. And, <laughs> and, I, and I, think, I think the lack of data usage or or the lack of using the information that's derived from the data has a negative impact on number one experience and number two profitability which is going to increasingly be a challenge in this you know economic environment we're in today um listen we're, we're about out of time um how would uh how would someone in the audience get a hold of you i i'll publish your information and your LinkedIn profile here. I mean, you're pretty accessible, even though you are located currently in New Delhi. So yeah, I am pretty, pretty much. I mean, a couple of ways. Let me, let, let, let me start sharing my screen and show you my LinkedIn profile. That's the easiest way. Follow me not on LinkedIn. I'm yep. 24 by 7 available. Go and chat. Yep. Yeah, what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll embed your LinkedIn profile in the uh, in the comments below, and I'll I'll even try to edit it into the uh, into the video itself. Absolutely. Well, listen, I I appreciate your time today. Um, really is amazing all the stuff that EXL does. I'm a little embarrassed that until you and I started talking, I had not heard of you guys. However, I feel better knowing that. In talking with like Brett King and Ron Shevlin and Jim Roos and some of the other people that are out there and very visible in the market, they never heard of you guys either. You guys are a best kept secret. Uh, I do know that there are some very dramatic plans here in North America to spread the word. You know, you're growing your relationships with banking associations. Uh, you've already joined Washington bankers. You've already joined yeah. Pennsylvania's and, and and we're in negotiation for or you're in negotiating with others. Um, and I know you've got a number of events coming up. And once those events get published and we have everything kind of concrete, I'll uh, I'll be sure to add them to the comments below. So anyway, I appreciate your time today. Pleasure, Brian. Thanks a lot for having me and both the Excel uh, to this. Appreciate that. Okay.